you see it every day. Um, you know, you see how small the world is. I mean, I think everybody has an appreciation for the fact that capital markets and the economy is so interconnected. You know, the world is so interconnected today, far more than it's ever been. I think everybody understands that. And even when you look at the companies in Chicago or in the Chicagoland area, you see companies like an Avid or, or Kraft or um, uh, uh, Caterpillar, whoever you pick, these are companies, big companies that have global operations. And even today, um, these companies have more than 50% of their revenues that are outside the US, just in our backyard. And that's just a few of them. A lot of companies have these large global operations. And so what does that mean? Um, in my role, I'm fortunate enough to be able to have the opportunity to speak with a lot of CEOs. And let me tell you a question I like to ask. And I love to hear their reaction to it. I, lo I love to ask them, are you, is your organization, is your company, are you a US company with significant overseas operations and revenues? Or are you a global company that happens to have its headquarters in the US? And it's interesting watching how people respond to that because virtually every CEO will stop and pause and say, we are a global organization that happen to have its headquarters here in the US. That's what they'll say. And virtually all of them will then go on to say, if you look at my leadership team, and if you look at all of our employees, they would say just the opposite. Which I find interesting. And a small number of them um, not many, but a small number of them will say, um, and you know, we have talked about in our leadership meetings whether or not we ought to be in the U.S., have our headquarters located in the U.S. Pretty interesting, I think. And I, and I bring it up because I really do think it highlights the need. This diversity and inclusiveness thing is big. It's huge. And, if you, and, and it goes back to whether or not you think you can be successfully long-term without really embracing this issue. Um, give you another uh, thing that, and it gets to the business case, I suppose, a little bit, but I think everybody would be familiar with the fact that um, today, demographics have changed, right? You know, the, Democrat, the demographics are so much different than they were 20 years ago and give you an illustration at our firm, at Ernst & Young, we probably hire 10,000 people a year in the US, something like that. Of the 10,000 people, 70% of them are women and minorities. 70%, only 30% of the people that we hire are white males today. Now, 20 years ago, it was probably just the opposite. But it just shows you what's happening in the world today that, mean, that, that really impacts our ability to succeed. It's a big change. I got some other stats that I'm gonna share with you uh, that, um, uh, that I really like, and some of, you, some of you may have heard this before, but what do we have? Six billion people in, in the world today? Well, if you take that six billion people and you condense it down to 100, and you kept the same ratios, what would you have? Well, you'd have 49 women and 51 men. You would have 82 non-whites and 18 whites. And of that, it would be 60 Asians, 13 Europeans, five people from the US and Canada, eight people from Latin America, 14 Africans in that group. You would have 89 heterosexual people, and you'd have uh, 11 homosexuals. You would have 33 Christians and 67 non-Christians. Think about that for a second and think about how small our world is today. If you think about that same 100 people, five of them would control a third of the world's wealth. 80 would live in substandard housing. 67 would be unable to read. 50 would suffer from malnutrition every day. Only seven would have access to the internet. 
and only one would have a college education. And think about the world we live in. Think about how global we are. Think about how small this world is today. Think about what it's going to take to succeed if we're going to operate as a global, if a company is going to operate on a global basis. Um, things are different. Um, and I think, you know, you, you take this and you, and you say, well, you know, we've been at this diversity thing for a long time. We have a, we have a lot of activity in our organizations around this thing. And then you have to ask yourself, have we had the results that we want and expect? 